be su- yeah, maybe wait for the volume to go up. <laughs> you may be surprised how certain life events can mess with your mind. Kind of like eating too much food on Thanksgiving messes with your stomach. Welcome back, everyone, to Studio X. I'm Scott Allen Turner, the financial rock star, on a mad mission to help you get financial independence, ultimate happiness, and a life full of awesome experiences. Got a question you like answered on the show? Drop us an email, Scott at scottallenturner.com. <laughs> to debt or not to debt. What are your thoughts on debt? To change jobs or not to change jobs? Are you in a, a dream job or dreaming about the dream job? To start a family, add to the family, or adopt your 14th rescue dog or cat? One of those or more might sound like a little bit of crazy talk to you. What has the biggest impact on a person's overall life? Their quality of life, fulfillment, happiness. Link in the show notes to this study that just came out if you want to read it. Number one on the list was paying off debt or taking on debt. Paying off debt had the biggest positive impact. Taking on debt or being in crushing debt is, as you would expect, the biggest negative impact. There are many, many benefits to paying off debt. As one of the awesome listeners of the Scott Allen Turner Show, you already know about the financial benefits. What was interesting in the study was the biggest non-financial thing that made people better. Feel better, feel better. Coming in at number two, right behind paying off debt, exercise. I would have guessed eating a package of Oreos, but that seems to be a temporary fix. Maybe that wasn't one of the options. Overall, according to the study, events beyond your control can hit the hardest. Things like losing a parent or caring for a sick or elderly family member. But one of the most powerful ways to combat the emotional, physical, and financial stress is to start or continue a regular exercise routine. I stress to people, not in an adding stress way to your life, I stress living your best life. Heavy on the money topics, yeah. But if all people wanted was more money, go to Vegas, baby. Bet on black. There's also health, relationships, spirituality, studio cats meowing, and of course, cookies. Studies show exercise lowers stress. You'll sleep better, have increased happiness, participants, we're obviously not doing burpees or sit-ups. I remember my dad, he had terrible arthritis in his neck. I was really little at the time, but I remember going to therapy with him. He'd be sitting under this machine that would work on his neck. The therapist would work on his neck, stretching, kneading, pressing. I was young, really young at the time. I had no clue what was going on. My dad did not prioritize his health. He was a good dad. The health information wasn't as readily available as it is today. Bad eating habits, six pack of beer a day, smoked for 30 plus years. And the quality of his life in later years was not good. Years after he had quadruple bypass surgery, he couldn't walk more than 100 yards before having to sit down. His leg bothered him so much. Healthy eating and some regular exercise go a long way toward improving your overall life, no matter your financial situation. What's interesting is half of the people in the study said they were happier after paying off debt. And I suppose the other half decided to go shopping for new clothes and charge it to the credit card instead. Think about this. If you're debt-free, fully funded 6, 9, 12-month emergency fund, how would that impact your job? How would that impact your relationships? How would that impact your hope for the future? I believe in the case of the job, knowing you can walk walk in any day and say, take this job and shove it. It's a pretty powerful feeling. A lot of listeners are there or getting there. I believe with relationships, the money fights decrease dramatically. Katie and my biggest money or biggest fights now are about moving the kitchen soap. I like it on the counter. She likes it in the sink. We're always moving it back and forth. (laughs) This is financial freedom, my friends. This is what you've got to look forward to. Fighting about dish soap. 
<laughs> so, I believe with thinking about the future, a nice emergency fund is a nice pillow to sleep on. And if it's a little more challenging, it's a challenging season of life, new parents, caring for elders, maybe you get a special needs child, sucky boss, then it's even more important to take care of your health. Wealth can wait sometimes. Wealth has to wait sometimes. Sanity is important too. You see, I want to make sure you're going to be around for a long, long time. I haven't got to meet you in person yet, many of you. We haven't done the world tour yet, so please bear with me. I don't know when it's coming. <laughs> to improve your overall life, make health and wealth a priority. You'll feel better. If wealth is a struggle right now, make health a priority. You'll feel better. If health is a struggle right now, make wealth a priority and you'll feel better. If both are a struggle, the good news is it's probably just a season of life. Make getting through the season a priority and you'll feel better. All else fails, grab a pack Oreos rock star and watch some Keeping Up with the Kardashians or something. <laughs> Watch something. Oh, did you hear about the person spending $300 a month on dog food? Now, people should pee, feed their pets what they want, if they can afford it. But the jury is out on the refrigerated filet of beef delivered to your door for Fido, or the king crab coming out of the Bering Sea on the deadliest catch for Fluffy. Our dog growing up, he ate dog food. Lived outside in a doghouse in the winter. He had some hay for a bed. He did all right. In Denver, I saw this health food store for dogs. That, that's true. And yes, I only buy decent food for our pets. But A, uh, I can. B, my wife cares. And C, it's a small business, so we support them. We are not dropping 300 bucks a month on chicken le fleur with foie grass, foie gras, <laughs> the duck foam, whatever it is, no clue. On these tiny, we have tiny pets. I think that's a uh, factor as well. One of the arguments is, well, pet food that has a one year long shelf life, that can't be good, can it? Yo, dude, I grew up on beefaroni, Swanson's frozen dinner, cinnamon toast crunch, Twinkies, all those hostess desserts. 17 years of that stuff till I went off to college. And during college, I don't think I ever had a vegetable. I'm still here. Still alive. <laughs> Again, if there's something for you to talk about. Did you hear about the lady who's spending $300 a month on pet food? If she can afford it, more power to her. But... I believe most people are not in that financial situation. There's lower cost alternatives that are as good. You're listening to the Scott Allen Turner Show, Dog Food. I'll be back in a minute. 